muscles of the forearm, particularly the anterior forearm, are important to me as a rock climber. I'm continually trying to make them stronger. I'm trying to look after their tendons. I'm trying to improve the endurance in here because they tend to be the weak point when you're rock climbing. Now, there are a lot of muscles in the forearm. And if we look at the anterior forearm, it looks very complicated. If you think about it, it's not that complicated. Well, it is still fairly complicated, but I'm gonna make it easier. I'm gonna tell you how to, a little bit of remembering, but a bit of working out which muscle is which, all right? Well, I'll try. Okay, I've got, I've got three rules, two rules and then a little bit of a, anyway. You'll see me do this when everybody, whenever anybody asks me to identify a muscle um, in the cadaver or on a model, I go through this process. First rule, what does the muscle do? And in the anterior compartment of the forearm, it's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna flex something or if it's running between the ulna and the radius, it's gonna rotate the radius about the ulna. So it's gonna cause pronation or supination. First rule, what does the muscle do? Second rule, where does the muscle run to? So it might be running between the radius and the ulna, but those are rare. It's more likely to be running either to the bones of the wrist so this, the wrist is the carpus, so it's going to be running to a carpal bone, or it's going to be running to the digits, either one of the fingers, the digitorum, or the, the thumb, the pollux. Third rule, join all that information up, sprinkle in a bit of Greek and Latin, and try and work out what the name of that muscle would be, and either you'll work it out correctly, or it'll spark a bit of recollection and you'll remember the name of the muscle. All right, let's try it, shall we? <laughs> Okay, what have we got here? Right arm, okay. So, I can see a whole bunch of muscles running down here. First of all, let's get this one out of the way. This is over here. This is actually crossing the elbow. So when I flex my elbow against resistance, you can see this is brachioradialis, right? It's running across here, right? So, that's brachioradialis, forget that one. But again, it's running from the brachium to the radial bone, so brachioradialis. Now these, these muscles here are kind of what we're talking about. So bum, 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 right, this muscle here is running to the wrist, and it's in the anterior compartment, so it's gonna be a flexor, flexor of the wrist. So this will be a flexor carpi muscle, because it's going to a carpal bone, and this side is the ulna side, isn't it? So we've got the, the ulna and the radius. So if it's on the ulna side, then this is going to be flexor carpi ulnaris. All right, next. Here's another one running down here. Where's that going? Now this kind of looks like it's going into the wrist because it's missing the bit here, but this is actually going into the palm. So it's going in here uh, and it's a long muscle. So this is palmaris longus running down there. All right, so um, this one here. Okay, where's this one going? Long tendon and that's stopping there. So that's going to the wrist. And again, it's gonna be a flexor of the wrist. So it's gonna be a flexor carpi and this is on the radial side, right? The radial pulse is over here, the radial bone here. So this must be flexor carpi radialis. Okay, bum bum bum. Now there's another muscle here. Where's this go? Well, this isn't going to the wrist. It's not going to the fingers or the thumb. Um, if we take off brachioradialis. Ah, right, this is going from what must be the ulna over here across to the radius over there. So that then, if that gets shorter, that's gonna cause that movement. So this must be a pronator muscle. Um, and this is, this is actually pronator teres. Just because we've got two pronators, there's another one down here, and teres means round. So this is the round pronator. Bum, bum, bum. All right, that's the first layer done. 
Mm -hmm. What can we see here? Well, here's another sheet of muscle here. And this, is, this looks like a lot of, like one big long muscle. And I can see down here, it's becoming a number of tendons that are running through towards the fingers. So this is a big muscle, lots of tendons coming off it, going to the fingers. Uh, if it's in the anterior compartment, then it's gonna be a flexor. And if it's running to the fingers, it's gonna be, it's gonna flex the digits. This will be flexor digitorum. Now there are two flexor digitorum muscles. There's a superficial one and a deep one. This is the first one we've come to. So this must be flexor digitorum superficialis. And I, that's all I can see here. Right, if I take that off, then the next layer, we've got another bulk of muscle here underneath these nerves and arteries. And that bulk of muscle, I can just see some tendons starting to form here, which are deep to those tendons there that we've cut away of flexor digitorum superficialis. So these tendons are again, running out to the fingers here. So this is the next layer of flexing digit muscle. So this will be the deep layer. Another word for deep is profundus, right? Deep, profound, deep, right? Profundus, deep. So this will be flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor digitorum profundus, that's gonna to run to the fingertips. All right. Now there's another muscle here. It's not totally clear that it's a separate muscle, but I know from experience that there's this muscle here and it's got its own tendon and it's hidden under this lot. So if you were looking at a cadaver, you could tease all this apart and you could see where this tendon goes. We can't on this particular model, but I know that this muscle is sending a tendon to the thumb. The thumb is the pollex, pollex. So this, and there are lots of muscles to the thumb. So it's not just gonna be, it's not just gonna be um, a flexor of the pollex it's gonna have another name, so it's long. So I reckon this will be flexor pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis longus. Okay, and then that, well, that's it. That's all we can see. Now I know if we were to take away these other muscles, we'd find a, a flat muscle here running between the ulna and the radius again. And that would also cause this movement. So it would also cause pronation. And because it's a flat kind of square or rectangular muscle, this gets called um, pronator quadratus. Bam, done, that's it. Those are the muscles here in the flexor compartment of the forearm. What about the extensor compartment? Yeah, the extensor compartment is a bit more complicated. And we'll come back to that another day, <laughs> all right?